We're out, out of the heart of the hurricane season, but November, you could still get development. And how do you get it? Homegrown development. And that's always dangerous because when you get homegrown development, tropics, you have less time to prepare. And that's the message on the feed here this morning. All right, I want to show you the hurricane season thus far. And to me, it's been a little odd. What's been odd is, is number one, we've only had one landfalling storm along the United States. That was Chantal. And also notice the inactivity here in the Gulf and here in the Caribbean, of course, though. And I think this hurricane season will be remembered by what? Melissa. The other story, 13 named storms. That's near historical averages, but we've had five hurricanes, and of the five hurricanes, four have been majors, and I'll tell you what, we've had three, three Category 5 storms. That's a lot of Category 5 storms for the season. Now, moving forward, the one thing we are noticing in the Atlantic Basin is there is an exceptional, exceptional amount of shear across the Atlantic Basin. All right, take a look at this. This is our wind shear product here. This is the strong wind shear. This is the weak wind shear. Light purple, dark purple, much right now of the Atlantic Basin is covered in uh, moderate, strong shear. So if you're a tropical wave, you've got to bust through all this shear all this year to get to the United States. And quite frankly, it's just not going to happen. Hmm. Keep an eye on this area. In fact, when you take a look at what we normally see during the month of November, this is where we start talking about homegrown development here, right? Where the development is close into the United States. Now, when we talk about homegrown development, it's not from a tropical wave coming to the east, you get homegrown development when you get a dip in the jet stream, the interaction between the jet stream and the tropics to produce development. I want to show you why we are pretty much done with the African wave train here moving forward because of this wind shear in the Atlantic is very hostile. Let me show you our wind shear product. Now, what you're looking at here is wind shear, where you see the dark colors, you have wind shear. Now, just to give you your bearings, this is the west coast of Africa. Here's the east coast of the United States. Here's Florida, and then we have Texas. This is Cuba. Here is Jamaica, and these are the Lesser Antilles. Look at all of the dark colors here, this wind shear. This is Monday. Let's go to like Wednesday. Again, west coast of Africa, east coast in Florida. Any wave trying to come through the Atlantic are, is hit by wind shear. That's why there's not gonna be anything developing in the Atlantic anytime soon. But as I mentioned, how do you get development you get development with homegrown development and uh, homegrown uh, development. How that happens is what we look for is a dip in the jet stream, as I mentioned, coming southward. And what can happen this time of year is you can get a gyre in a form. Now, what's a gyre? In fact, Sandy, Superstorm Sandy, was formed by a gyre. When you get a dip in the jet stream coming down across the Gulf of Mexico, what you end up doing is you change the wind direction in some areas and keep it similar in others. Let me explain. So here we go. You get this dip in the jet stream coming south. And what that does is changes the wind flow across uh, Mexico and South America. Instead of coming in from the southeast, you change it to the west-northwest. However, you keep the wind direction out of the east across the eastern Caribbean. And you can kind of see what happens. What ends up happening is you end up getting a, a counterclockwise flow, right? And what happens is you get a gyre to form, an area of low pressure that starts to thunderstorms. And then eventually what happens is you can get a little of an area of low pressure to form. And then showers and thunderstorms get going. And then all of a sudden you start the tropical development. Now, in order for that to happen, you need this dip in the jet stream. Let me go back to this graphic right here. You need this to sit there uh, for at least 48 to 72 hours to get the gyre to form. Now, even if you get this to happen, it doesn't mean you're going to get development because then you have to look at the wind shear. But we know that the wind shear projected here is going to be relatively light. So given that, let me go back to my models. And this is the idea uh, that I came up with for the feed. I want to show you the computer guidance that I use every day to help me make a forecast. And this is, of course, 
all in our AccuWeather, uh, AccuWeather Pro site here. So early next week, look what's going on here. This is the European model. You see the dip in the jet stream? You see it? There it is. Right in there, Eastern Gulf. So when does it get in here? Ooh, right here. So Sunday, Monday evening, 24 hours. Tuesday, 48 hours, 72 hours. See what I mean? Even the American model, same story here. Sunday night, look at the dip in the jet stream. You see it? Right in here, coming into the Gulf. Monday, Tuesday, and then it kind of lifts on out. But it does tell me that this is, this is enough that you may get a gyre started here. And you notice what's going on in the American model? Watch this in here. Watch the yellows, and reds, and oranges start showing up right there. You see that? Monday, Tuesday, all of a sudden you see this in here. And remember what we showed on the wind shear in this area. Let me go back. By Tuesday, what does the wind shear look like in the Caribbean right in here? All right, here's Cuba. Here's Mexico, Central America, lower wind shear. You notice that? And the other thing I see, if I go back to this, I see an area of high pressure here. And you typically would look underneath the belly of high pressure. So I see a pattern with a high. I see a gyre that could form. And you have low wind shear. What does that tell me? That tells me, while well, we're not going to get anything right away, if we do get development, it's going to be in the Southwest Caribbean. Now, where would it go? It's unlikely to head toward the United States, but until it forms, well, you keep all options open. And that's our message in the feed this morning. Watch the Southwest Caribbean next week.